Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we created our first meta store and we enabled Unity Catalog for our Databricks workspace. Today, we are going to create our first catalog. We are also going to see how you can define external locations for the manage table at catalog level as well. Okay, so if I come back to my account console and go to the catalogs tab, you can see the meta store that we created. So if I expand this, you can see the location where this meta store will store the manage table data. So this was the meta store location that we specified and Databricks added the ID of the meta store in the end of the location. So this is the complete location where at the meta store level, the manage table data will be stored. Now, before we can go ahead and create catalogs, it is very important to understand how external locations can differentiate the data storage for manage table at each level of object model in Unity Catalog. So in our Unity Catalog object model, we have meta store at the first level. Then the second level is catalog, the third level is schema, and in the end we have tables. Now, we have already specified location for our meta store when we created it. So this is the location where the data would be stored for the managed tables. It means whenever you create a managed table, by default, the data for that managed table will be stored at this location in the meta store label. Given we don't specify any location for catalog and schema. Now, consider you specify a location at catalog level. Well, that is a different location that you specify. So whenever you create a managed table under the schema, by default, the table would be stored at the catalog level because now we have specified a location at the catalog level. Now, consider if you define an external location at a schema level. Now, if you create a managed table, the table data would be stored at the schema level. And this is what is the fallback mechanism. Consider if you have not defined any external location at the schema level, then whatever managed tables will be created, the data would be stored at the catalog level. Now, if you have not defined any external location at the catalog level, then whatever tables you create, the data would be stored at the meta store level. And this is how Unity Catalog manages the data stored for the managed table in the object model. Now, there can be a question. What if we create a meta store with no location? For example, we created one with location, but it was optional, right? So what if you create a meta store with no location? In that case, if you create a table, you have to specify the location at the catalog level. It means whenever you have not specified any location at the meta store level, when you try to create a catalog, you have to specify a location at the catalog level. And that is mandatory. And this is why if you create a location at the meta store level, then catalog level, it becomes optional. It means you can either specify a location at catalog level or you cannot. And these locations that we are talking about are external locations that we are going to create today. And we are going to see for catalog how you can create a catalog without external location and how can you create a catalog with external location. Now, I am in my Azure portal. Now, before we can go ahead and create catalog, let's create an external location where we would store the data if we define an external location for a catalog. So we are going to use the same storage account that we created in our previous video. So we'll just expand this ABD ease with data 01. We will go to the storage browser and then to the blob containers. Now we created this root container in our last video. Today we are going to create a separate container for our catalogs. So in order to do that, I'll click on add container and I'll name the container as data and I'll click on create. This will create a separate container called data. Let me go into this. Now we'll just add one directory called ADB. And this would be the root directory under our data container. And inside this, we will create one more folder called catalog. And this would be the root location for our catalog folder. So any catalog that we create with an external location, we will use this location as the root for that catalog data storage. So I'll click on save. So we have created the external location, whatever is required. Now I'm inside my Databricks workspace. So let me just go to the catalog tab. And we can see a plus button here in a to create catalog, right? Let me just click on plus and you can see add a catalog. This is because I'm logged in with the same user, which is the meta store admin user. So if I go to the accounts console into the meta store, so you can see ease data is the meta store admin for this, right? So if I go to the workspace and you can see I'm logged in with the same user, which is ease data. And because of this, I have privileges to create a catalog. Now, if I click on add a catalog, I get option, put the name for the catalog and type of the catalog. Now, if I expand this, we have three types of catalog. Today, we are not going to discuss about all of them. We are just going to use standard. And we have an option to define an external location for the storage. And this is the location where all the data for your managed table created under this catalog would be stored if external location for managed table is not specified at the schema level. Now, we can use UI to create catalog or we can also use SQLs in order to create this catalog. Let's create one from UI. So what I'll do is I'll give the name as dev and I'll keep the type of standard. Now, I'll not specify any location. So let's just create a catalog without any external location first. So I've just created dev. I'll not specify any external location and I'll click on create. As soon as I do that, it says catalog is created. Let me just go back and refresh. 
and you can see the div catalog created. If I expand this, by default, they give us two of the schema, which is default and information schema. Now we can go ahead and create schema under this div catalog. Now we can also use SQL in order to create the catalog. So let me just go back to workspace. Let me go to notebooks and we'll create a new notebook called catalogs. Now, in order to run this, we need to connect this with compute. So if I click on connect, we can see the cluster that we have created in our previous session. We'll just click on start and attach. So it will take some time to start. I'll pause the video and come back when the cluster is up and running. Now, our cluster is up and running. Before we can go ahead and run our command, let's change this to catalog in the left hand side. So you can see the catalog, which is dev here. Right? So we have already created our first catalog called dev. Let me just go ahead and see some information about it. So I'll just change the notebook to SQL first. So I'll click on confirm and we have changed the notebook type to SQL. In order to see the information for the catalog in SQL, we can write describe catalog. And in order to see all information, we can provide extended and then the name of the catalog, which is dev. So I'll just run this. Now, if you see, there is one error here. It says Unity catalog is not enabled on this cluster. This is because we created this cluster before we enabled the Unity catalog for our workspace. So this is where it is legacy cluster. So let me just go back to the compute. And if I expand this cluster, you don't see anything here mentioned as Unity catalog. It means it is not enabled for Unity catalog. So let's just terminate this. Let me go into edit and I just need to do a change where I'll make it as shared and then I'll just change it back to single user. As soon as I do that, you can see our tag added as Unity catalog means now this cluster is enabled for Unity catalog. We'll not change anything else. We'll just click on confirm. And now this legacy cluster has been changed to use for Unity catalog. Okay, let's just click on start. Again, I need to wait until it start. So I'll come back when this cluster is up and running. Okay, the cluster is up and running. Let's go back to our workspace and then to our notebook. So I'll click on this and I'll go to my notebook. And now we will just rerun this command. So I'll click on shift and enter. Awesome. Now, if you see, this is running. Great. Now you can see all the information about this catalog. But if you notice, there is no location specified. It means by default, it is going to store all the managed table data to the Metastore location. Okay. So if I expand this, you can see the schemas and this is the information about the dev catalog. Now, what if we need to create a catalog using SQL? So to do that, you can just type create catalog and then the name of the catalog. Let's make it dev and we'll just type SQL. Now you can also add some other parameters. Like if you want a comment, you can add comment this catalog is created using sql and i'll just run this awesome this completed right let me just go back and refresh here and you can see a dev sql let's go ahead and see the same for dev sql so i'll just change it to dev sql and i'll run this nice if you can see you can get the information and also the comment that we used right what if we need to drop this catalog now we don't need both the catalogs here right dev and dev sql what if we need to drop our dev sql catalog so to do that you can just type drop catalog and then the name of the catalog which is dev sql so let me just run this okay now if you see we got an error which is saying cannot drop because dev sql is not empty this is because by default there are some schemas created by databricks under each of the catalog okay so we in order to drop this, first we need to drop the schema, then we need to drop the catalog, right? Now under some schema, you'll find some default system tables created, right? So in order to drop the schema, you have to first drop the table. Now that's a tedious task, right? First go drop the tables, then drop the schema, and then drop the catalog. But we have one more option. You can just add cascade in the end. Once you do this, it will go recursively. First drop the tables, then the schema, and then the catalog. So let me just run this. It says, okay, if I come and refresh here, you can see the catalog is gone, okay? So if you want to drop a catalog with all its data elements, it, whether it is schema, tables, views, anything, you, you can use cascade. But beware, once you put cascade, everything within the catalog would be gone along with the catalog. And this cascade can be used with schemas as well. Okay. Now we have seen how to create catalog with the default location as the Metastore location, right? What if we need to create catalog with an external location? In order to create catalog with external locations for its managed table, we first need to create an external location in Databricks. Now, if I go back to the catalog tab and to the external data, 
Now, if you create on this create location, you can see here we can go ahead and create an external location. Now, we have already created our container and the location where we are going to store the data for our catalogs. But in order to use that, we need to first define them as external location. And in order to use those as external location, we need to connect those using storage credentials. Now, what is storage credentials? Storage credentials tie as a bridge between Databricks and your external storage account in order to connect them. Now, if you remember when we created our Metastore, we created an ADB UC connector that we use to connect Databricks with this storage account. Since the storage account remains same, we have only created a new container. So we are going to use that same UC connector. Now, if you're creating a new storage account, then you have to go ahead and create a new UC connector. But since we have defined our container in the same storage account, we are going to use the same Databricks UC connector. So we first need to define storage credential. For that, I'll just click on cancel and I'll go to the storage credentials tab. Now, if you see, we already have one storage credential created, which was used by Databricks to connect with this container that we created for our meta store, right? Now we need to create a new one. So we'll just click on create credential and we'll again use Azure Manage Identity and we'll name it as UC Catalog Storage. Okay, and now we need to provide the connector ID. We'll go back to Azure portal in the UC connector We'll again copy the same resource ID. We'll come back to Catalog Explorer and we'll paste that. And I'll do nothing and I'll click on Create. Awesome. As soon as I do that, you can see a storage credential is created. Now, since we are the owner of this credential, we can go ahead and use this credential. But if someone else need to use this, you need to grant them privileges. And we will see this in our later videos for privileges. For now, I'll just go back to my notebook. And now we are going to create our external location. Now I can use the UI to create it, but we are going to use SQL. So we'll first define our external location. So to define an external location, we just need to write create external location. And within tick mark, the name of the location. So I'll put it as ext catalogs. And we need to provide the location, which would be under URL. So within single quotes, I'll provide the URL which is the location that we created for our catalog, right? Under data container, ADB and catalog. And now we need to use storage credential. For that, we'll write with, and we will use storage credential. And we need to provide the name of the storage credential within the tick mark. So I'll just use the tick and I'll type SC catalog storage. And we are done. I'll just run this. Awesome. You can see. Okay. Let me just duplicate to show it to you. So I'll just duplicate. Now, if I go to catalogs tab, I go to external data. And now if you see, we have an external location created. If I expand this, you have options like browse and you can even provide this external location permissions to different workspaces. Okay. For now, we'll not touch any permission or workspace. We'll see this in our later video. For now, we have already created our external location, right? Now we can go ahead and create our catalog. So we'll go back to our notebook. And now we will create our catalog with that external location. To do that, I'll just type create catalog and the name of the catalog, I'll put it as dev ext for external. And we need to provide managed location and we need to provide the location that we created, right? So this was the location where it needs to store the data. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here and we'll add one comment. And I'll run this. So this will go ahead and create that catalog. So you can see it is OK. So I'll just refresh. And now you can see we have that catalog. So if I expand this again, some default schema are there. So we can go ahead and now see the properties for this. To do that, I'll just write describe catalog extended dev underscore ext. OK. And let me just run this. Awesome. Now you can see there are so much more information. You can see it has created the storage route as the location that we have specified. And this would be the location where it will store all the data for this catalog. So you can see after the location that we have specified, it has added location like underscore unity storage catalogs and the catalog ID. Awesome. We have completed creating our catalogs today. We have created one catalog which would default its managed table location to Metastore. And we have created one catalog which is pointing to an external location for its managed table storage. Now, we have also created a storage credential for that. And we have also seen how to create external locations in order to use them for catalogs. In our next video, we are going to create schemas and we are going to load some data into tables in order to see how Unity Catalog manages and stores those data. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.